Giants 23, Patriots 21. Welcome to Talking Giants presented by Asiki. I'm your host, Bobby Skinner, here with my co-host, Justin Pennick. And we're going to recap a full preseason game. Ooh. And listen, does it matter if you win or lose in preseason? Yes. Not really. Disagree. But I, winning always feels better than losing. And here's a fun fact before we really dive into it. The Giants' last two preseason wins were versus the New England Patriots and time-expiring game-winning plays. Wow. Kyle Oletta to Alonzo Russell, and then a Graham Gano field goal after Sandro Platzkammer put them in range. So we're going to talk about it all from A to Z in this. Justin, how would you feel about the first unofficial game under the Brian Dable-Joe Shane era? Hey, Bobby Skinner. What's up, everyone? We did it. We're here. We're talking Giants football. That's kind of what we do. It's kind of what we're about. Welcome back. Uh, our first preseason victory since 2019. Yeah, because, you know, no preseason 2020, went mm -hmm. 0-3 last year. So um, Feels good to be back. Yeah, definitely. And, and we're going to talk about it from top to bottom. Quarterbacks to, you know, third-string linebackers. We'll break it down. We got gotcha. you. Some good, some some very worrisome stuff the, yeah. the secondary room in particular which we'll talk about but first this episode is brought to you by brian thormalin we talked about him just regular eric we, so we, we're, we're recapping some people we got kid wonder with a one as uh the eye and kid Love that yeah dominic sequero dustin balek it's balek not ballet even though he can do it a mean ballet this one kind of was like is this him his name is david carr yeah I believe it. Maybe. I'm for it. You know, he's part of the world beater tier. He's Absolutely. got some money to throw around. Mike Kennedy, Keg, uh, uh, Keg, Greg uh, pa uh, Pagliuca, and then Tanner Ryan. Justin, who are these people? David Carr, the best back quarterback the Giants had before the guy that we're going to talk about today, Tyrod Taylor. Uh, David Carr and those wonderful people went to patreon.com slash talk giants. $2 a month plus some other tiers. You get to hang out with us live while we watch the shows. You don't want to miss those shows, by the way, because hopefully we're going to be celebrating some more wins. Um, so you want to be part of those Victory Monday chats a little early. Um, Bobby Skinner will send you some, some stickers, magnets in the mail, and then twice a month you're entered into shirt raffles. Patreon.com slash Talk Giants. Thanks to our patrons. Bobby Skinner? Let's talk Brief about... Brief thoughts? Like, what do we just feel? Well, let's talk feeling? about some big picture stuff. Yeah. So first, first things first, the Patriots didn't play their starter. So you shouldn't have... Like, any positive takeaway shouldn't be, like, the biggest positive Over takeaways the moon, in the yeah. world. Like, like you know, like, we shouldn't be going, like, see, this offense is going to be really good. So, there's that. But I will say, let's talk about some one things. Uh, overall, I thought, even though they weren't really throwing the ball downfield, I thought the offense had good spacing and good reads to go through, whether it was Daniel yeah. Jones or Tyrod Taylor. Like, there was options in this. It wasn't simply timing. There were some second window throws. Um, you know, even the... Uh, you know the 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 throw to Saquon Barkley on third down. You know they, that was a that's what like I thought man, was the best example. Man coverage and uh, even on the Kenny Galladay drop, which we're going to talk about Galladay in a negative light. Like if that if they covered that up, you know that like designed like little kind of like a you know slant screen. Saquon Barkley had an angle route in the middle of the field and was open. So if they like covered that up, Jones turns his head and it could have had Saquon for six. So I I thought about that. I, I like that overall. Again, it's it's hard to see all the concepts on TV without the all twenty two right away. Um, but something you pointed out is I thought the pace you you know the pace of the offense was good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I want to talk. About the, the, we'll we'll start with the spacing first. That third down Saquon Barkley out route that he ran on third down. Um, thought that there were there were routes that were being run down the field. At least this is what it looked like, right? Because Saquon Barkley was the only one that was near or close to the first down marker. I think everybody else was way past the sticks, which that's not something that we've seen the last two years in, you know, I don't I don't want to say his name anymore, in the other system that we ran, right? It's not so, what's what we saw in that system is everybody go to the first down marker, turn around. Everybody go to the first down marker, run around where the sticks are and not going past the sticks. Where Saquon Barkley was the intermediate option that was available tonight on that, I think it was like a third and five. He ran that out route first down. He was in man coverage too. Beat his guy. Beautiful first down. Love to see that. The pace of the offense. And I think I really noticed this more with the first string offense than I did the second string and the third string. Thought the game kind of slowed down with the second string and the third string guys. Which I like. I like to see that the first string offense is maybe taking taking on a little bit more during the preseason in, the, in this regard. The Bills offense and the Chiefs offense the last couple years. I actually, this was in the middle of June, we had a mailbag. And I did this, 
what I thought at the time was very meaningless research and meaningless prep on how often the Bills and the Chiefs would run plays, how often they were getting up to the line of scrimmage and snapping the ball. They're two of the quickest teams in the NFL the last couple of years at running plays, at the pace at which they run, at the, the pace at which they ran plays. Now I think if Daniel Jones is getting to the line of scrimmage with twenty some twenty seconds left on that play clock, I think that gives him time to diagnose things at the line of scrimmage, make calls, make audibles. It gives time for the offensive linemen to make their make their calls and whatever they need to do. And I think specifically for Daniel Jones, we've seen some of his more explosive plays. When he's had time at the line of scrimmage, think back to, I think it was Cincinnati 2020, Evan Ingram, big catch he had on the right sideline. There was a play against the Eagles, the home game in 2020, Deion Lewis motions out as a wide receiver from lining up at the backfield. That was when Jones had a lot of time at the line of scrimmage to make calls. So I am excited. Week one of the preseason, no little things you have to look out for. I'm excited that that may be a thing in this offense where we're going to be breaking the huddle, getting to the line quickly so Jones can diagnose and read a defense yeah and it gives the defense less time to adjust to to what you're yeah. doing so there's some philosoph uh you know philosophical. Uh, philosophical things i like mike kafka in the booth like that you know we've talked about that a lot so yep. won't, won't uh go on that the run game overall which we're going to talk about like i mean the run game looked good for basically everyone but let's let's start let's go with through the quarterback so because this is a quarterback league. yeah my my big picture thought before we get some of that nitty-gritty stuff my big picture thought is i was expecting the offense to be worse and I kind of wanted the defense to be better and I'm glad we are leaving this game not disgusted with the offense because that was my worst fear is that we would hop on here and we would have to justify and somehow say that the offense isn't as bad as they look so I was worried that that's the conversation we're going to be having but it's not so well, I'm happy and 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 I that, that leads into the Daniel Jones thing is quarterbacks you know Nothing flashy, you know, 6 for 10, 69 yards, nice, 6.9 yards per attempt, nice. You know, through camp, like, he doesn't look comfortable. So, again, against second stringers out there, he did look comfortable yeah. today. So, that that was nice, you know. Uh, the 6 for Baby 10. steps. You know, 6 for 10, <clears throat> the, the drop by Kenny Gall all day uh, was an incompletion. The ball was thrown a little high, but it was in Jeremiah's Hall, uh, Jeremiah Hall's hands. Mm-hmm. That was an incompletion. And then uh, a bad deep throw to Darius Slayton. And then Kenny the, Galladay, the, there was the a deep throw, throw to Kenny Galladay where yeah. Kenny Galladay just just ran straight and, st- and didn't do any type of release at the line of scrimmage, which we're going to talk about Galladay and, and some of the things we're seeing at campus transferring over to him. Yep. Um, even though I do like the offense as work for him. You know, I, I thought he looked good on third down. Again, the Galladay throw was on third down. Uh, the throw to Saquon was on third down. Uh, and then the the scramble on third down, like yep. nothing open, quick, you know, uh, like quick quick trigger on the run, not waiting, waiting, waiting. And then the second drive, they had that sack, um, you know, which put them in like second and eighteen, and they were they were they weren't able to recover after that. So again, nothing special out of Jones, but just look comfortable. So that was that was yeah, good to see. Not for- a disaster. Which again, I was worried that we would be coming on here talking about how the Giants' first-string offense looked like a disaster against the Patriots' second-string defense. And they moved Week the- one accomplishment, I'm glad we're not doing that. <laughs> and they moved the ball well down the field. Again, had some third-down conversions. Should have had a touchdown if it wasn't for a Kenny Galladay drop. Yeah. Uh, you know, they're running, you know, they ran the ball well, had a nice screen to Darius Slayton. So they just looked like, you know, they had some good yeah. stuff out there and able, again, against second-stringers, but they were able to move the ball yeah. well. And so... I'd much rather have that than, like you said, we're talking about like the offense looked bad for second stringers, and yeah. this, you know, we're recapping preseason week one with like, oh my gosh, this could be a disaster. Still, probably, you know, we're not saying it's going to be great this year, but this was a a nice day for the starting a, a good starting week offense. One, a good week one result. Um, we've mentioned his name enough. Before we get into, I guess, other quarterbacks and Tyrod Taylor, you want to just talk about Galladay? Yeah, I mean, the drop is literally, you know, it's it's a difference between four points. Yes. You, know, you end up kicking a field goal, and Gall- Galladay is either, you know, at worst is fourth and inches. At v- at the very worst, yeah. they are set up in fourth and inches, and I would like to think that this coaching staff would go for it on fourth and inches, especially so early in the game. Uh, you know, and, and so and that's like that's just a that's that's disappointing. You know, and we've seen some drops in, in camp. That's disappointing. And then like you know the. And he got off the ball slow on that route too, yeah. and then on on the deep throw to him, man, he just doesn't do like he just just ran. You know, he didn't he didn't uh didn't have any type of release. You know, didn't try and stack uh, the corner. So the you know, and again, he's never gonna be a guy that's gonna get a ton of separation, but a little separation would be nice. 
Um, and I think Jones could have still thrown a better back shoulder ball on that throw anyways. But still, it's just he looks stiff. He doesn't, you know, if, he's never going to be the fastest guy in the world. But I would like to see more out of Kenny Galladay. I've liked the way the offense has used him, but I haven't been overly impressed with just Kenny Galladay in general. Yeah, uh, the most sc- concerning part about Kenny Galladay's game is that it has matched what we've seen in training camp from him. Like the, if he if he just had this drop and you know maybe he just looked a little lackadaisical in a preseason game, but he's been killing out he's been killing it in camp and he's been grinding and he's been trying to prove it. He's been, you know, Kenny Galladay has something to prove this year and he's showing that in camp. Then I'm like, all right, whatever, it's a preseason game. But the fact that this did match what we've seen in training camp and ev- everything that we've seen all in one. We saw today from Kenny Gallon in this, in this preseason game. Everything that we've seen so far in training camp. Uh, again, you said slow, stiff, dropping balls. He's had a he's, he's been dropping balls in, in practice too, not just looking slow and stiff. So, just especially that play, he just looked disinterested, disinterested in running that route, not having the awareness that the ball could possibly be going to you. Well, that ball was designed to go hit you know, him. It d- d- didn't look like he was ready for it, especially on a. A third down situation where you're, you know, less than what ten yards away from the end zone, where you catch that ball, there's a chance that you're getting seven points. I mean, that that is the difference between you know winning a game and losing a game. And we saw that last year with the Giants. It was rare to get. We had op, rare that there were opportunities to get seven points. Rare. It was rare last year. It's been rare the last couple of years. So I, I'm not happy, man. And we're we're coming out with this PPP to you know on, on Monday, and we didn't talk a lot about his camp, but. Man, uh, I I hope it turns around, but I, I got to tell you what, I don't know if it's going to. I, I want to get into the O line and running backs because they uh some O line is actually some of the interesting takeaways, including Shane Lemieux's injury. But since we're on the wide receivers, I thought the wide receiver group as a whole didn't play great. Richie James had that the, the, the Richie star. James touchdown from Tyrod Taylor was that was a, just a sick route. He run a stick and non. Yeah, that was just sick. Like uh, that was that was beautiful. Good throw. Good timing on Tyrod Taylor with that. That was really nice. But even like you know the biggest, you know his his next play was the ball that was tipped up in the air from uh you know tipped off Colin Johnson's hands into into Richie there James. There were so many balls whether it was bad throws by the quarterback I can't there wasn't or, more interceptions. Yeah, it was away. crazy that I, Patriot defenders were just tipping them up in the air and, and nobody was coming down with them. It was crazy. It was about like four or five of them of you know from from tonight. Like Colin Johnson led the team with seven catches and 82 yards. Two of the catches were were from DJ. Um but he had a fumble. Like you said, he had that ball that got tipped up and very easily could have been an interception. So even even in like the best performance, wasn't overly impressed. Uh, the other wide receiver note I have, and this is get your conspiracy theories ready. Slayton played the first drive with the first team. They gave him the sweep, had that screen pass for 17 yards. He didn't play for the rest of the night. Are I, they trying to keep him on ice? I think that's a good thing. I Yeah. Which, you know, if they're trying to get value for him. But, you know, remember B.J. Hill? They Remember who was the only player who didn't play in the third preseason oh, game last boy. year? B.J. Hill. All right, conspiracy so team. So I, I, maybe they're trying to keep this guy on ice and not have any risks of injury before 53-man cut, uh, yeah. 53 man cut down day. So um, it's just kind of weird for a guy like Darius Slayton who is not a starter, but he got his reps with the starters. Yeah. But not to get any reps after. Like, Colin Johnson got some reps with the starters. He played a lot of the game. You know, mm-hmm. he's playing in the third quarter. So, um, that was pretty interesting. Let's talk about the O-line. First, Shane Lemieux left with a toe injury. He was in a boot. Hopefully, that's not serious. Because we really can't afford any O-line injuries right now. Nope. None. We cannot afford any in- injuries to the starters. One, the only, the backup to every single position is essentially Josh Azudu. Like, any one of the starters that comes in... The backup is uh, the the guy coming in is going to be Josh Azudu, whether you have to move guys around or not. And Azudu's not ready. Like uh, no. he did not look good. It was the same issues he had in college. Which again, he we knew these were going to happen, and that's why Azudu should be on the bench to start his career yep. to to grow through these games. Like he was firing off high with his chest up. Wasn't bringing the hands. Guys were getting into him. You know, you see now. There's times where you see like the the foot speed and like, okay, that's really nice. Something he did, but it's just some of the issues. Like you see guys get in his chest. He's getting driven back. And again, you see the the flashes of good in those plays, but there's just too much bad. Like he's got to clean up his game before he's ready to play. Um, you know, and obviously he's better than any of the other backups. So yeah, 
you put him in if if Shane Lemieux was going to be injured long term or any other player would be injured long term and hopefully a toe injury. I don't know how long any toe injury could be. Even a broken, you got nine left. Yeah, even, even if you have a broken toe, I don't know if it keeps you out for more than a month. Um, and also Jameel Douglas, who's not good, but still the O-line is so thin that even an injury to Jameel Douglas isn't good. So Josh Azudu, I, I paid attention to him a good amount and he just didn't look great. Um, first preseason, so you know, doesn't it's not a, a saying his career won't be good, but just one good. And then Evan Neal. Now, Evan Neal gave up the sack on that that play action pass on first down, where you know they're going one way. He just didn't get his hips over, didn't keep his feet moving uh, as good as he can. So that was obviously the worst play when he gave up that sack. Um, a little bit of a coverage sack, but a sack nonetheless. But he just didn't look good. Like it wasn't a disaster after that. Like, but there was like a lot of sloppy reps. You know, there weren't disaster reps, but it was just a lot of sloppy reps and no really good reps. So, obviously, he's got you know he's got to keep his feet moving within the block. I think that's his biggest issue right now. It's like, hey, you get into the block, yeah. you're getting hands on. Keep those feet moving. Keep those feet moving. Um, you know, uh, so it's just you didn't. There was not a lot of good out of Evan Neal, and there was there was some sloppiness. So he's. He's a rookie who's going to have to grow through some stuff, and he's going to have growing pains. But right now, he's just he's got to keep those feet moving. He's got to keep those feet moving. Other smaller things that he's got to clean up, but that seems to be the main issue right now. Is just he's got to keep those feet moving through the block because he's getting to the block, holding it, and he's just not sustaining it most of the times. Yeah, and we wanted to wait until the first preseason game to really talk about Evan Neal and, you know, really give like a, hey, here is a an Evan Neal take and Evan Neal opinion. And his struggles about not being able to move his feet, I also feel like similar to Kenny Galladay, it matches like the camp, the camp observation, right? What we've seen in camp so far, um, it matches what Evan Neal did tonight. I will say he looked better tonight than at times that he has during camp. There are sometimes during camp where he just hasn't gotten out of his stance. At least tonight, I thought he got out of his stance well and there was no utterly embarrassing reps that Evan Neal had. But yeah, moving his feet and just having more active feet is is what we need to see. Yeah, and that's the thing with it. Like, again, there wasn't disaster reps out of Evan Neal. Even the sack wasn't like the worst rep in the world. Um, But there was no good reps, really. Yeah. Except for maybe one, maybe two. It's totally fine. Yeah, like the concern level of Kenny Galladay... It's getting near. It's getting near like the upper echelons of a, of a ten for me. If we're doing a one to ten, like I, I'm, I'm concerned about Kenny Gall. Evan Neal. It's like you're a rookie. It's like a and, five. And again, even you with know? Evan Neal, if there's concerns, it's short term concerns. Like correct. Rookie struggles shouldn't change what you think of, yeah. of how his career is going to play out. You know, it's short term struggles, which and, do matter. You know, because every season matters, no matter what part of the process yeah. you're in. But. Um, and part of for it for Giants fans, it's it's nice. It's kind of refreshing because we just went through this two years ago with Andrew Thomas. Yeah, and and part of it is uh, at least just trying to read the tea leaves a little bit, hearing what Bobby Johnson has to say, hearing what Brian Dable has to say sometimes about Evan Neal. Uh, why I think Neal is you know maybe struggling a little bit to start. I think he's very critical of himself. Um, where I think he's earned that pedigree of being a high draft pick and also just knowing the type of dude that he is coming from Alabama. He's a very, very hard worker, um, whereas Kenny Galladay has looked just flat out disinterested at times. So I don't know if, uh, you know, I don't know if Kenny Galladay deserves that praise of being like this really hard worker. But I think Neil, at this point, he's so critical of himself. He doesn't recognize if he has a good rep because he's so hyper focused on that bad rep that he had a couple plays ago. So hearing what Bobby Johnson and Brian Dable had to say about him, that's where I kind of think that. Evan Neal is at this point. I, I kind of think that he's he's thinking a lot. He is thinking a lot about what he has to do, where he has to be, things like that. So hopefully the more that he gets comfortable, the better he'll look. Yeah, I do think it's a lot of it is some mental, like you said, over... And again, it's a big adjustment going to the NFL. Huge, yeah. And he's also um, changing positions and, and, again. Yeah, and like you mentioned, there was times where he was like sometimes... Like, even like, you know how we're talking about like there's times in practice where he like wasn't getting out of a stance. Mm-hmm. There was one rep today where he got out of a stance slow. Uh, was able to wash the guy around again. Not a good, not a good yeah. rep. Not a horrible rep, but it was like so out of the stance. Was able to wash the guy around. But if you know, if Jones was taking a, you know, a five step drop instead of a three step drop, it's it could it could have yeah. been an issue. Um, so uh, I actually won some money on this game by using DraftKings. Turn mm. big league action into big winnings with DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. Right now, new customers can bet just five dollars in any game and get one hundred dollars in free bets instantly. Plus, all customers combine multiple bets for a shot and even bigger payout with DraftKings. DraftKings same game. 
parlays. At DraftKings Sportsbook, you're able to bet on your favorite batter to hit a double and his next appearance, your favorite pitcher's next pitch to be a strike, and so much more. So while I've been in Jersey, yep. I think I put like over like these few weeks, I put 75 bucks in. Yeah. Tell me how much you won. And I thought I was going to be down. Last week, I won like uh, like $90 on the Raiders game, cashed it out, except for I kept 10 bucks in to bet on the Giants today. And was it minus one and a half? For me, it was. And I bet... I bet uh, They won by two. They better not have avoided this. <gasps> oh, no, I won. Good. So I bet the Giants, a parlay for the Giants to win and the over. And I, well, I, I, tr- I quadrupled my money. Huge. DraftKings is safe, secure. So I'm leaving New Jersey up on DraftKings. So DraftKings is safe, secure, and reliable. Best of all, you can deposit and withdraw your cash whenever you want. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use promo code JOHNBOY. New customers can make any $5 bet and get $100 in free bets instantly. That's promo code JOHNBOY only at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner in Major League Baseball. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. See show notes for details. MLB trademark we use with permission. Now let's talk about the star of the offense, the stars of the offense before we get into the defense, the running game. Yeah. Who was your favorite out of Antonio Williams, Gary Brightwell? And Deshaun Corbin. Man, can I can I can I be real with you? You know I have a bias towards Antonio Williams. He's a friend of the show. He's a friend of the pod. DM'd me uh, a couple months ago when his Twitter account was hacked, and he wanted me to be the one to share that. Hey, Antonio Williams' Twitter account is hacked. Just be aware. So we're we're tight like that. We both like NASCAR. I thought Gary Brightwell was the best one out of the running backs tonight. I'm gonna be real with you. He had some good plays, and you know he averaged five point seven yards a pop, seven carries. Tony yards. Williams had better stats. Brightwell you know. broke some tackles, but I still, I, I still watch Gary Brightwell run, and I'm like, you run way too up and down. Yeah. Um, you know he was able to break some. He like, was running tough. Break some leg tackles. Um, but I, I still, I mean, I think Antonio Williams outperformed him. Like Antonio Williams ran behind his shoulder pads. You know, nine carries for sixty one yards. Had the touchdown at the goal line. You know, which. You know, you get a two-yard run; it's a touchdown. But that, like, you know, just like there was a cl- there was a clog at the line of scrimmage. He put his shoulder down and piled himself it. Yeah. into the touch and in for a touchdown. So I, I think it's it was weird because Antonio Williams has been ahead of Brightwell and Corbin in every single practice, every single practice. But today he was behind those guys. I don't know the reasoning for that. Yeah, I even got confused because Antonio Williams made a really nice hit on special teams to start the second half on kickoff. He was running kickoff. I I clipped it, and I said, nice tackle by Yusuf Corker, thinking that, oh, if Antonio Williams hasn't played by now, he's probably just not going to play at all. But then, lo and behold, played in the second half. Yeah, so but he looked good. Corbin, um, like, he only had six carries for 23 yards, but he had five catches. He looked good, too. Like, oh, I guess we forgot to talk about Tyrod Taylor when we talked about the QBs, but Tyrod Taylor kind of got to his checkdowns pretty quickly which was is you know that is the story of Tyrod Taylor um and it's you know what makes him a good backup QB is he's not going to nuke drives uh I he had uh some misses he, he, there was times where he looked good but he did have some miss can I say something I know we like talked about how it's like you don't want to feed this I saw people being like Taylor looks better is there, there are we going to do this? Like, is, there this, was, is this going to happen? There was one point where Tyrod Taylor was like 10 for 12 and the completion rate was high. I mean, it's just, just what? Just, I couldn't believe, I, like, I, I, I thought, I knew that it would happen at some point. checked it down, man. I knew, I knew at some point Jones would like, like Jones will have a bad game most likely at some point, right? And I knew at some point that would happen. I was laughing like i was like i was like are you is this re- is this really I happening i can't even entertain af- it right now after we watched this so that's that's just uh, that was good though for me because like oh this is just gonna you're just gonna have to ignore this because this is just this was just predetermined that this whole yeah. taylor should start is gonna happen. like i was blown away when i saw when i saw you know because i wasn't on twitter much because we were live streaming and i, I was like oh Oh, this is this is happening right now. So I was blown away at some of that reaction. Yeah. So I just it was good for me because it's like okay, just totally ignore it because it's it could be rational to have that conversation at some point. But right now, it's yeah, just, right right now, I'm it not was just dismissing it. It was just predetermined. I was blown away. Yeah, ten, it was 10 like, for wait. twelve. How many how many yards per attempt did he have? Well, he went thirteen for twenty one for the. Uh, the game, but at one point he was ten for twelve, one hundred twenty nine yards untouched. I mean, his biggest pass was that Richie James pass that got tipped up. 
The touchdown was really nice. It was a nice throw. You know, that was a 26 route. yarder. The, the Richie James play that was tipped up in the air. Yeah. Okay. Like that was his best. That was his longest. I just I, I got a kick out of it. I was like, oh, we're actually doing this. Um. So, but one, again, Corbin, you know, guy who was fighting to get a chance in the NFL was a nice. Um, check down option. You know, had the five. That's eight point five eight yards per completion, not counting the twenty six yard that was tipped up in the air. Wait, eight point five yards per completion. Yes. What was the yards per attempt? I could do it real quick. Yeah, One, you do it real quick. So 20, 20 divided by one hundred three. It it was it was six yards per attempt, even if you keep that big one in there. Oh, am I just really fucking bad at math? Well, I I kept in the the completion. Oh, okay. To Jersey James or yards per attempt. Yeah, yeah, six point oh nine, which is, which is not good. No, not good. Um, also, last thing on the offense before we get into the defense. Well, I want to talk about the. We got. I want to talk more about the running game instead of just for offense alignment. Okay, right? okay. Last thing about the running backs before we get into the running game. Sure. I I don't think I've ever been. I haven't been as excited as seeing Sandro get that fifteen yard run. That was the huge. Game I mean, we love Sandro. Sealed it. Yeah, like that, that was awesome. Um, I was very hyped for him. The Brian Dable had him break down the locker room at the end. Oh, they oh that was so cool. So that yeah. was uh that Good was for him. that was just a fun moment uh to see him get that uh, opportunity to close out the game. So yeah, good for him. happy for Sandro. Very happy for Sandro. Um, what was cool about tonight, and I'm even considering the Darius Slayton screen that he got as like, you know, the screen game is an extension of the running game, so I'm counting this. Getting athletic offense alignment in space. So think to that Slayton screen. You saw Evan Neal, big number 73, running in front of Darius Slayton. Um, think to that uh, pitch that went to Saquon Barkley on the left side of the field. You saw Daniel Bellinger uh, blocking out in space. And then you also saw Andrew Thomas like yeah. pulling. You, you, I think you even saw it with the backup tackles, too, where you had uh, Debra Debra Hamilton. Hamilton. Debra Hamilton pulling out in space on that same, sp- on that same side. So... We have athletic offensive linemen. Like, literally, you look one through five. You know, Feliciano ain't going to do much moving from the center spot, but hopefully Lemieux is here, and even if Azudu's there, he's athletic. Yeah. Andrew Thomas, uh, Mark Lewinsky, Evan Neal, all these guys are athletic, and they can move out in space. Let's freaking use them. Let's get them out in space with these outside zones or these pitches. Yeah, I'm excited um, for the quick, run game this year. I really am. So quick, quick little plays that get the running backs the balls in their hands, and... Uh, Using these linemen out in space, that's what we saw a little bit tonight. So if we, if we can continue that, that's cool. It's going to be a diverse run game. I, I really am excited for the run game, yeah. not just from this preseason game, but just from what we've seen in camp. Like, I really think the run game, you know, I'm, I might turn into a run the damn ball guy yeah, for 2022. Yeah, are, are we going to turn into uh, the Titans? It's funny. We have the you – know, we take the coaches from the Bills and the Chiefs to the – Pass pass heaviest teams in the NFL, but we're going to turn into the the Ravens, the Titans, and the 49ers. I'm here for it. You got to evolve, evolve with your personnel. They say. Why don't you read an ad before we get into the defense? Let's and read talk an about ad. Darian Beavers and Mike McFadden. So I'm going to tell you what. I'm probably going to be here in this John Boy Media office until like I don't know, like solid four o'clock in the morning because I got to edit and then I got to. I got to do some socials posts. So what I want to do when I get home probably at like 5 36 o'clock in the morning is i'm gonna start my day but also end my day with some a g1 i want to improve my gut health i want to improve my immune system and starting out with the scoop of ag1 in a cup of water glass of water it just starts my day off fresh it's lifestyle friendly whether you eat kato or Paleo, vegan, dairy-free, or gluten-free, Athletic Greens uses the best products based on the latest science with constant product iterations and third-party testing. With Athletic Greens, you're investing in an all-in-one nutritional insurance. Right now, it's time to reclaim your health with just one scoop and a cup of water every day. That's it. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year long time supply of immune supporting vitamin d and five free travel packs with your first purchase all you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash giants again that is athleticgreens.com slash giants to take it ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance let's talk about the defense yeah we'll talk about the good the best part like i thought the best player like the star of the night was darian beavers We'll talk about Mike McFadden, who uh, I thought had a really good night, and then we'll talk about the secondary and get get the thing that we're, we're, we're worried most about. You know, it's like when your fears are confirmed, that's when it's the worst. And I think the secondary confirmed some of our fears. Beavers looked awesome. 
Like he was yes. process. Like he just looked like a, a good linebacker out there. Like processing quick. Looked like a ball player. Yeah, flying around. <laughs> okay, Carl Banks, uh, <laughs> flying flying around the field. Like he looked tough, fitting up versus the run. Like he held up versus offensive linemen. You know, even in the pass game, like he sniffed out that screen, had a tackle for a loss. He would have had another tackle for a loss in the pass game if the running back didn't drop it. But he came there and, and laid the hit. Like Beavers, man, I really think he's going to challenge Tay Crowder for that starting spot by week one. I'm not going to guarantee he's going to win it, but he should be, he should be starting, uh, like or should be ba- like like really pushing Tay Crowder because he, I mean, he looked good out there, and obviously he's a little bit of an older guy, you know, he's not some 20 year old rookie, he's 23, but he's got the size, like he can fit up in the run game, use his hands well to deconstruct blocks, like he just looks solid out there, um, and I think he's, I think he's going to be a solid player in the NFL. Awesome form tackling. I mean, that, I, I'm, I am Six a sucker. Pick. I am a sucker for old school, solid, good form tackling, and you know there were, there were even some plays where you know running backs would you know they they drop the ball, but I mean he he just finishes plays, he wraps up, it's clean, you bite the ball, you use your shoulder, ba 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 ba. Um, Darian Beavers was the most fun player. I, I he was the most fun player to watch out of this entire game. Like if, yeah, if you I, were to pick I, I viewed him MVP, as like the. Like the he was like my player of the game was Darian yeah. Beavers. Yeah, yeah, maybe yeah, and player of the game, I would also pick Darian Beavers, yeah. Yeah, like like the, very impressive for a guy who Comfortable. Know, first game in the NFL preseason and and went in there and looked good, you know, he's practice he was playing with the first team cuz Blake didn't practice and with the second team and he just looked good out there. The other rookie linebacker fourth round pick McFadden who I, like was my guy I was watching for in this game. Man, it's this can be a little fooling because you are going against backup offensive alignment in preseason, and they're obviously going to be slower than starters. But he did what he does and was being lined up all around. Made he plays. was shooting gaps. They were lining him up in the A gap, and he was giving offensive line. Like he was just setting up pass rush opportunities for other he guys. He was disrupting. Yeah, That's what he, he was. Doing. He was disrupted. Whether it was, you know, lining up in the A gap, you know, there was a. Uh, a like a zero yard run where he was the Mike linebacker. He pro- like, just quick, like. QB turns. It's a like a, a a BC gap run. No, he doesn't have to think. Process gets downhill, fills his gap, tackle at the line of scrimmage, and and it's you know it's a zero yard gain. So I thought he looked good out there. Was one bad play he had in coverage on a third down. Obviously, you got to get that stuff cleaned up. Um, but McFadden, who was a guy I'm excited, like was excited to watch tonight. Yep. You know when he was in the game, he was a guy who I just like kept my eye on a lot. And I I was impressed. Like he he was pretty disruptive out there. Yeah, and as a guy who was buried on the depth chart a little bit too, with Blake Martinez being out, Tay Crowder being a starter, they these two guys got a lot of run because uh, the interior linebacker room is is pretty thin. Carter Coughlin was not active. Cam Brown and our our, our friend uh, Cilantro. Austin uh, Calitro. Calitro, not Cilantro. Fourth down, tipped up an interception to himself. Good Made a him. lot of plays. Yeah. Not he, just that play. He's not going to make the roster. No. But, you know, he he, did, he tipped an interception to himself. Yeah. So so good on Austin. You, so interior linebacker room, I don't know if I would have predicted that room to be the, the spot that impressed me the most from this game. But without a doubt, the most complimentary complete room yeah, of tonight's that, game is the interior ladder linebacker. running backs, you know. It, yeah, yeah. Um, so uh, that was nice. Let's talk about the really negative though. Besides the Dory Jackson, the secondary is bad. There's, there's, yes. no, there's no getting around it. You know, Darnay had a third, like was bailed out by a third down drop in man coverage. Aaron Robinson was targeted five times on one drive, five times. First, you know, the deep pass where he gets beat. And that, you know, we t- he was our first player profile projection. What did I say was his biggest weakness? There's times Goal where he balls. just loses the release. Yeah. He loses the re- release and gets stacked and gets beat quickly. That happened. Now, the bad throw, he was able to, to recover and get a play on it. Okay, that's fine. The next, next play. play, they go right out Same with thing. a fast guy, Tyquan Thornton out of Baylor. Same play, 33-yard catch. And then... Uh, you know, they, they, they target him again, uh, incompletion, and then down the red zone, he gives up a touchdown. Um, we said Aaron Robinson can be what hinges this defense right now. It's hinging, hinging towards the bad way. It's, 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 it's sink or swim for Aaron Robinson because teams are not going to target a Dory Jackson a ton. They are going to go, they are going to, if, if you're an offensive coordinator and you're going against the New York Giants, 
you are saying your town, whoever your wide receiver to is like, get ready to eat this game because we are going at you and we're going at you a lot. So it's going to be, it's again, it's one preseason game for him, but it's going to be sink or swim for Aaron Robinson, a guy who played nickel corner at UCF, played a little bit of outside last year. Um, but it's, again, you don't want to react too much to preseason, but when it's your the things you fear or hope for and they're confirmed, that's when it's worrisome or yeah. hopeful. Like when the, the running game looking good, it's like, okay, that's hopeful because we've seen a lot of that. You know, it's confirming. The secondary, you know, and Aaron Robinson particularly having those issues, well, that's fearful because that's their, those were the biggest fears going in. And that's how he got beat. Again, was at the release, uh, which was which has been his biggest issue so far. Yeah, and trailing in those goal balls, right? You know, yeah. just just getting behind. Uh, there are plays where if the ball isn't perfectly located, Aaron Robinson shows a good awareness on how to get to the spot, how to get to a spot and deflect the pass and force an incompletion without having a pass interference. And we did see that tonight on Tyquan Thornton when uh, a Brian Hoyer ball was slightly behind. But then, like you said, the next play, Tyquan Thornton, Brian Hoyer hits him in stride when Aaron Robinson loses at the line of scrimmage. And... It is goes and it goes for an explosive play. So um, that is what you know. I'm I'm worried about if if quarterbacks can get that good connection with the wide receiver and they can hit these wide receivers on a on a rope, then Aaron Robinson is probably going to have a long year. You know what I'm worried about a little more. What if one of those three starters gets hurt because the depth? Oh yeah, is horrible. Terry McLaurin going up against Aaron Robinson, and then uh, who? And then who's who? I can't even tell you who's the number two outside Rodarius Williams. But who's next under Rodarius Williams? I can't even tell you. Cordell Flott, and he Cordell Flott left the game with a, uh, a, a groin injury. Great. Um, I've never. They seen were a game. so bad. Yeah, I mean, they don't turn their heads. I've never seen know? a game where. Just every single cornerback didn't understand the notion that if a ball was coming and a wide receiver was noticing, the eyes open a little bit more when the ball comes your way. I've never seen so many different cornerbacks not turn their heads to make a play on the football. I've never seen, never seen it any before yeah, in my life. It's uh, it's very. <laughs> It was just like it was it, bizarre. Again, like we're worried about Aaron Robinson. I'm more worried about if Aaron Robinson gets injured. Like Our, that's, we had some we had some smart things to look out for. Uh, my two things to look out for were the you know running game, Saquon Barkley being efficient. I guess we saw that. My second thing to look out for is can a backup secondary player make a play? No, <laughs> no. And I mean they just were throwing back shoulders at them all day, and they weren't able to locate at all. Like it's and they were getting beat. Like and just in general, like it's. When we face good QBs, man, it might be just a, a terrifying. I feel guy. like you don't even need to be that awesome of a QB to complete a back shoulder pass like that when when you know that Wink Martindale is going to be playing man right. coverage. But what I'm saying is just like when we're playing those good QBs, oh, like, like Rodgers, like that's that's what Rodgers does. Like, yeah, we're going to get torn up for like 35, 42. The same points play a game. over and over and over again. It's um, it's just not good with that backup secondary. Uh, other things you want to clean up on the defense. None of the D linemen really popped out to me. No, DJ Davidson did not look fun, but I don't want to talk about that. Leonard too much. Williams didn't play. The edge room didn't do much. Kayvon was quiet and, and a little bit. He had, I, I honestly don't care if Kayvon, like we said it before a game, like if Kayvon doesn't do anything, I'm not worried about that at all. Yeah, we'll watch him. We'll watch him tomorrow. I thought Roche had some decent plays, but nothing great, especially when you consider he was going up against second and third stringers. Ellerson Smith had that almost safety, but even yeah. that wasn't a great rep. That was almost like a coverage thing. He, O'Shane didn't do enough, much. They don't look to have counters. You know, they didn't look fat. I thought Ellerson Smith would, you know, be able to beat some backup tackles off the edge and just beat him with speed. Didn't even do no, that. No, no. So the the edge of the room didn't do much. I mean, the only sack was actually Trenton Thompson. Trent, Trenton Thompson out of San Diego State, who I do think could could, especially with the belt injury, could battle for a roster spot with Yusuf yeah. Corker. You know, they we, they both had good games. Like you 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 know, there's. There's things you like about use of Corker, but I do think Trenton Thompson's more of a complete player and has less flaws than Corker, and he's he's more versatile. So you know, there's a possibility that he could battle for a roster spot, you know, undrafted free agent or uh, you know, uh, practice squad at worst. So um, I I you know, again, he made a play and now, but he he was rush free. That's something we could talk about. Wink Martindale, big picture before we close it out. Yeah, it didn't show a ton. 
but didn't show a ton, but you also saw Wink Martindale. Like mm-hmm. a lot of a, a lot of like linebackers lining up in the A gap. Let's get let's just cover every gap. Andrew across Adams the line. in the A gap too. Yeah, yeah. A couple times the safety were, was lined up there. Obviously, Trenton Thompson got a sack. You know, Darnay Holmes was sent on a blitz on on a, on a play. So again, not not throwing the most exotic stuff out there. You know, you did see Kayvon or Jihad Ward dropping the coverage for a play here or there. But, again, this is what Wink Martindale is going to do. He's going to blitz and play man coverage. They didn't throw anything exotic. But you did get a little taste of, like, hey, you know what? Blake Martinez, Tay Crowder, Darian Beavers, Michael McFadden, get ready to get your asses in that A-gap going against center and guard off the snap. Yeah. So you better be bringing your hands. You better be able to deconstruct a block, and you better get go play fast and fast and hard. Yeah, one of the things I wanted to see from Yusuf Corker and Trenton Thompson, you know, knowing their scouting reports and knowing what they did well um, at their respective colleges, is that they were good in the box and they're physical players. They like to fly around the football field, and both of those guys made some made some plays in the run game. They were both kind of coming in and blitzing. You know, obviously we want to see them make plays in the passing game too, whenever they have the opportunity, not allow any big plays. Um, but so it was fun to actually see them get out there and play and hit and tackle because you're not allowed to really do that in practice. Right. All right, anything else before we close it out? We have one more thing to talk about. You know what? We should talk about SeatGeek. Yeah. They, you got to go to preseason games. Yeah. Today's episode. So, so, so let's talk about this, too. It's SeatGeek. So you can use promo code GIANTS to get $20 off your first purchase, right? Yeah, definitely. You use that promo code GIANTS, and you go to the giants Bengals preseason game. You get to hang out with me. Uh, I actually want to gather a lot of my friends to go, so we're all going to use SeatGeek. You can basically get the tickets for free. Basically can. Yeah, and if you don't know what SeatGeek is, they're a ticketing app that makes buying tickets super simple. Like, we've got the apps on our phones. We used it for the Yankee game the other day. Whether it's football, concerts, basketball, baseball, festivals, or more, SeatGeek puts tickets from all over the web in one place to make buying simple. SeatGeek Seek, rates every ticket from 0 to 10. Make sure you're getting a good deal. Green means good. Red means bad. Every ticket on SeatGeek is backed by their buyer guarantee. So you could shop. Guess what, guys? What, what, what Evan Neal needs, what every player needs, confidence. Mm. Don't worry, we've got the hookup. Use code GIANTS for $20 off tickets at SeatGeek. That's $20 off your first purchase with promo code GIANTS. Make sure you click the link in the description to download the app. Um, I know exactly how we're going to end the show unless you have an idea. Well, hit me. I'm calling it the hopes and dreams segment. Um, my hopes and dreams of everything that's going to go right for the Giants for the next week. You ready? Hit me. I have two on the top of my head Shane Lemieux is just going to be perfectly fine there's going to be nothing wrong with this toe I'm not too stressed because it is a toe injury yeah like I, again I feel like you have nine more I mean just get over it love you Shane hope you're better Shane Lemieux is just going to miraculously hear, heal from his toe injury and Aaron Robinson is going to forget that this game ever happened and he is going to play like the player we think he can be and we know he can be and that those are the top two things that come to my brain in terms of the hope and hopes and dreams segment yeah i'm i'm i, I got hopes and dreams too. evan neal i was thinking moves his feet i was thinking possibly we could do let's do two minutes of read dumb tweets okay we could we have that's a that's a talking giants classic we actually i we told him that this tweet was stupid oh wait can i I, I, I have a dumb I have a dumb beat reporter question that somebody asked. Oh, here, here it is. It's cool. Michael Irvin. Tyrod Taylor looks better in this offense than Daniel Jones. Just great, great, great troll tweet from NYG Daily. Yeah, great job, great job. Uh, can I can I read some from Pat Leonard? Go for it. Uh, Pat Leonard asked Kayvon Thibodeau where his mind was when he first stepped on an NFL field. Quote: I mean, hopefully, my mind was in my head. But it was definitely on the game and making sure I didn't get really ahead of myself and kind of honed in on what I had to do. I replied and I said, great question. (laughs) Just what are you like? What are you looking for, Pat Leonard? (laughs) We so we live streamed the game for the first time we've ever done. Yeah, didn't get a chance to really see any like dumb tweets. Well, we had some dumb comments and I just started reading them angrily. Well, I, I think people caught on and they started intentionally commenting dumb things just to get a reaction out of us. That's true. That's true. But but uh, it was... So I think the next time we will live stream a game will be... The Super Bowl. Yeah, it's either the Super Bowl or preseason week one <laughs> next year. Whichever one comes first, that will be the next time we live stream a game. <laughs> um, which I've had like thoughts in my mind. It's like, if the Giants win a Super Bowl... I'm going to spend it next to 
I'm just going to be working and then they're going to be over and it's like, let's record a podcast. But we're going to do it. We're going to do it in the city that it happens, though. Yes. And we will go out with the Giants afterwards. Yes, we will. So if, you know, I talk about confidence with SeatGeek. I sit there and think about when the Giants win the Super Bowl, what we're going to do. We'll be able to afford that cover chart. I just hope we're not like 45 and not like, and then we're just old and not cool at all. True. At that point where we're not invited to those things. So, all right. We appreciate you guys. We'll be back Monday, or actually Sunday, our lo- our final training camp yes. live stream. Um, then I'm going back to Florida, and then we'll be back for regular episodes. I think we're going to get Clem on and Patricia training next week, so look yeah. out for that. We appreciate you guys. Um, we'll see you on the next one. Until then, let's go Big Blue.